Welcome to ITWTV. We're so glad to have you with us today. I know that God has a plan for your life, and we're going to share some things today. If you'll just pay attention, God will speak to you. We know that we have a Holy Spirit that's right where you are and knows what you need. And so we're just going to believe, God, that the testimonies today, the things we share today are going to touch your heart. So thank you for watching. I'm here with my uh, co-host, uh, Shayla, and uh, we have guests today. We have Lisa and Ashley Stringer, and we're so excited to see what they have to say today. So we're going to turn to them now, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lisa, thank you so much for coming. God bless Ashley, you. Ashley, we love you. Thank love you. you. Very, very grateful to have you. And, um, you know, we are always trying to take any opportunity that we have to highlight other individuals in our city that just are living everyday Christianity, bringing yeah. the kingdom yeah. of heaven to earth. And so, um, you know, I well, you actually have known of Larry for, I mean, of, for Doug. Uh, Doug for <laughs> that, well, years, I didn't mention right? Doug. That's her husband, Doug Stringer. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I don't want to give him all the credit. Everybody, you know, he, That's this, right. This is, this is not the backup crew. Yeah, they're, yeah. The, they're front line. So. That's right. Doug uh, says we're partners. Partners, yeah, yeah, okay. Partners. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a beautiful thing to be yeah. partners. Yes, you know, amen. And no competition. We just each stay amen. in our lane and serve each other and serve the Lord. And it's a beautiful. Marriage is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Having a teenage daughter, Larry, I'm sorry I cut you off. I kind of threw it this no, way. But it's, it's just exciting because I get to see young people all the time. And, yeah. And you see um, people in relationship, and you so want to sow an example and say, look, when you tether yourself to God, yeah. marriage is amazing. And, and yeah. raising a teenager and trying to make sure she understands the order of things, yeah. a biblical order of things, yeah. and God's mandate, I tell her intimacy with the Lord in marriage, in covenant, yeah. is the most spectacular, beautiful thing you could yeah. ever have. Amen. Outside of marriage? Amen. Issues galore. Yeah. You are setting yourself up for some drama. Yeah. So we like, okay. pay attention. Yes. Yes. Pay attention. Yes. 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 It may be good for a moment, but good luck in the long term. Right. You know? Right. So anyhow, yeah. I went there, y'all. No, that's good. No, I I've got great grandchildren, so I've got generations serving the Lord. My son was a missionary and my grandson just got out of YWAM and been to all over the world preaching the gospel Amen. and so you know we want to pass that heritage that's down right. you know and we got to be that example that's right for them to have something to follow well it's the know? it's the golden nugget it's yeah. a secret to success it's a, yeah. it's a key to like prosperity because yeah. prosperity isn't just financial it's emotional that's it's true. physical yeah. it's it's psychological yeah i want to prosper in all yeah. <laughs> all departments so yeah. Well, you know, if you ask me my successes in life, I would probably say my children and grandchildren would be my greatest success Amen. to see them serving God. It doesn't have anything to do with money or things I've done, that's but right. to watch them, that's the blessing. It's legacy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is true, legacy. It's legacy. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one no, thing. Because no. <laughs> for those of you all that say, man, I don't have a legacy that I can look back on. Either one, I was adopted. Don't even have a clue who my biological parents are. And my adopted parents, it's just really not worked out too well. You can start the legacy yes. with you. Yes. And you know what? Be it as it may, God knew who your parents were or are. Um, and there is destiny in yeah. you as well. And there are people that probably have interceded for you in your future. And you will live it out if you choose to tether yourself to the Lord. There is yeah. legacy in you and you can change it. I yeah. love that. I love yeah. that. It always has to start somewhere. That's yeah. right. You That's know, right. Somebody That's has true. to be the catalyst for this. <laughs> and as you... Um, I was going to say with Somebody Cares, you guys represent as well Somebody Cares and Doug, but I'm already thinking about um, when you were saying that, just even being the first person to start a legacy in your in your family, how God works full circle, and sometimes you you see the fruit of that even with those that are older than you or that you may kick off and catapult that legacy, and then the older ones will sometimes even come behind the ones Absolutely. who it's never too late for. It's never that. too late. So God will honor um, that restart. That's so. right. Amen. Wow. Now, uh, so you mentioned the ministry. What, what's the name of the ministry? Yeah, what's the ministry that the Lord allows us to steward, because I believe it's a stewardship. Yeah. It doesn't belong to us. It's just something that, that's on loan, if you will. <laughs> uh, it was birthed back in 1981 uh, when my husband had a radical transformation. Uh, he was a young man who was lost in the world, as he says, living in sin, uh, living uh, you know, with a girl and um, just 
unfaithful to her and uh, living the good life, if you will, on the street, occasionally, occasionally dabbling in drugs and things that just aren't healthy. And when his best friend was killed over a cocaine drug deal, he went to his knees and uh, oh. had a just moment with God where he yeah. said, God, he said, you know, if you can do anything with someone like me who's brought shame to your name, and broken your heart, then I will give myself to you from this moment forward. And he said he heard in, in his spirit a small voice that said, um, don't call me Lord. You know, and he says, but God, even the, that, you know, everybody, you know, I've, I've said that your son is Jesus and I've yeah. accepted him and he rose from the grave and so I'm saved, right? That's what the Bible says, to accept him. And he said, even the demons in hell know my name. What makes you any different? And what he got from that is that we can't just claim the name of Jesus and ride the boat of grace yeah. and think that I can, go to, to, I can go sin and go back to my life and, hey, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, I'm free tomorrow. Yeah. And then let me yeah. go dabble yeah. with some drugs yeah. and have a good time. And Jesus, and today is a new day. Well, you know, God does give grace. Praise God. Yeah. But you can't trample underfoot yeah. grace. Right. It's and so grace. it's a cheap grace. It's not a transformational experience that you have and so he said at that moment it was like you hear of the miracles of people who have been smoking for 30 years and they pray and yeah, they receive yeah. the faith that they are free and they never touch a cigarette yeah. again god can do that in yes. any yes. circumstance yes, for yes. anyone and so he did it for doug and that day doug began to read the word of god and, and i just thank god for that moment yeah. because I'm here because of that moment, right. because he gave his life to Christ. Ashley has a good daddy. I have a great husband. Amen. I'm sorry, you have a great daddy, not just yes. a good daddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and so I, I have great leadership yeah. because my leader, who is the head of my home, chooses to follow the leader of all yeah. leaders, yeah. who gives us his living word. And, um, and that's how the ministry was birthed. And so yeah. we have been uh, over 35 years now uh, helping everybody from the destitute, the prostitute, the down and outer, to um, the Lord has expanded our territory from the inner city of Houston <laughs> to the four corners of the globe. Yeah. Uh, there is no limitation to where God takes us to serve both kings, presidents, and people that are living in the garbage yeah. dumps. Doug always says that we must never forget where we've come from, and that yeah. is a promise that he made to God. God, I will never forget where I've come from. I was a young man who was homeless at a time because I chose to live for me. Yeah. He had a home he could go to, yeah. but in his prideful yeah. arrogance, he wouldn't get along with his dad or stepdad because there was some alcoholism and abuse in the home. He chose to take on his own road, and that road led downhill. But yeah. ultimately, God never lost sight of where that young man was, Amen. and he reeled him in, brought him home, and, and now we're a happy family. Yeah, so. praise <laughs> the Lord. So Thank that's you, a Jesus. little bit about the ministry Amen. with yeah. a lot extra. I love it. I, you, you said something that I think is really funny, and I, 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 I want to address this to the audience real quick because you said that he thought he would give God a bad name. Yes. And I'm thinking, I've heard people say, oh, in my life, I've given God a bad name. I said, the devil can't even do that. That's right. So, so, so don't, don't think that you're giving, you, you can't do anything to give God a bad name. That's right. You, you're not that great. You know, I have to tell you with all the chaos going out in the world that some of you all may turn on. In fact, I think more people don't watch the news. I'm going to say in our household, we're news junkies. Um, yeah. we, I, I believe that we need to be informed. We need yeah. to know what's going out there, going on out there for multiple reasons, but one of those is Shayla, I know you as an intercessor. Mm -hmm. Larry, if you're going in to do prison ministry, you, man of God, have to be an intercessor yeah. <laughs> to be prayed up, to discern how to touch the heart of these people right. that, as you said, maybe are the ones that don't feel um, that they're worthy of even allowing yeah. the King of Kings. Why yeah. would I, he want me? Exactly. You know, after all I've yeah. done, some of them yeah. maybe even murdered multiple people. But God says that none should perish. Yeah. And, and he's very keenly aware that it's the sin and the enemy that has caused them yeah. to sin, Absolutely. not him. Yeah. You know, yeah. so he, if they can wash yeah. that mess off, they've got a new start. Yeah. So with that being said, um, I think that, that, that he, is, he is more than able to transform any circumstance in any situation Amen. at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. And so we need to not underestimate his power. And so with regards to the news, don't always believe the hype. You know, <laughs> don't, don't believe the hype. Be informed. And if you've gotten a bad, hype. yeah, don't believe the hype. And if anything, use the hype to draw you near to him, to cause you to be the second Chronicle 714. Yeah, if on. my people 
you know, would humble themselves and pray, I'll move mountains for you. Amen. You know, in an instant, he can change the circuit. In an instant, don't think that whoever is in leadership has to be there. He can shake them out in a, in a moment. Yeah. But, but he also, if for those that wonder why we live through some of what we live, is because he's not a God that forces us to right. anything. Yeah. Exactly. He gives us choices, exactly. and we also have to be responsible for those choices and live in the consequences. Yeah. Now, you told me about Doug getting his life right yeah. with God. How about you? Yeah, tell you me. weren't yeah. born saved, Your were story. you? Um, well, I'd like to say that I, um, <laughs> he had his eye on me from the time I was in my mama's womb. Matter of fact, is. he knew about me yes, way before that. Uh, you know, I grew up in, in a home that believed in, in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Um, I was uh, attending an, an Assemblies of God church as a young girl. My father became a workaholic because he wanted to meet the, um, the goals of all of the other people on the block to take their family on a decent vacation. Uh, you know, because there's people out there that they don't get a family vacation. Yeah. You know, they work their tails off, and there's no money for even right. a seven-day trip. And if it is, it may be to Beaumont. Yeah. Or, you know, you're, we may go to a camping park because that's all we can afford. And, you yeah. know, you pitch a tent and we barbecue some baked yeah. beans. That's reality. Yeah. We need to not fool ourselves to think those of us that get the luxurious seven-day Walt Disney World cruise, right. <laughs> you know, or Disney World vacation or much less anything yeah. else. And so Daddy was one of those people, and he worked really hard, so he stopped going. He started getting overtime. You know, double pay, you know, at $50 an hour is a lot of money yeah. on Sundays. You make more good. money on a yeah. Sunday than working two days during the week. And so we would get bus to church. Loved Jesus um, with all of my heart. But we were not integrated as a family deeply in the Word. So we prayed. We might bless the meal here and there, but never do I really remember that we would get into the Word no. and delve in the Word. Yeah. And yet my father, when he had his Sunday off, would serve in kids' ministry. And how many leaders are not like that today in all sincerity right. yeah. that are serving at a church but not going deep in their own personal time? Yeah. So and, and they believe, well, I'm serving, so yeah. I'm serving, but you're not growing. And you're really only setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. All that to say that, that I never had relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. I was just covered. And yeah. so I wanted to get out of living in a lower middle class income uh, neighborhood and lifestyle. And I, I wanted to be successful in business, achieve success in business. And it was only after brokenness uh, that I fell to my knees and had my true transformational encounter with Jesus. And that wasn't until 30 years old, after 30, that I said, God, forgive me for trying She's to do 32. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm proud to say the Lord has blessed me with 50 years. Come on. And uh, unashamed of the age, for no other reason than I visit people every day, either by email, by phone, or we do hospital visits. And there are people fighting for their lives that are much younger than yeah. me. Yeah. And so I don't take life for granted whatsoever. I'm right. like, God, bring on the years. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I want the health to go with yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> amen. So amen. Uh, again, I had the transformation, and, and that's when I fell in love with Jesus. And the rest is history. Were Here you I am. always in, you were in California before you I were was. here, right? I was, I was actually born and raised in Houston. Oh, OK. A native so Houstonian. Yes, but I've um, always wondered. But such a conservative life life that I never left the neighborhood. You know, I, I just didn't yeah. go anywhere. I, amazing, I went, though. I just just knew what very little. And so when I graduated, I wanted to explore the world. So I applied to Arizona State, was, was admitted, went to Arizona State University, learned how to balance a checkbook, things that I want her to learn now as a teenager my parents didn't do with me. Yeah. So I believe, I, you know, if I, there was no such thing as a cell phone alarm <laughs> or, or, or an alarm clock even. I had the old school mom that if it was time to go to school or work, she'd come wake me up. Breakfast was ready. My clothes was washed. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Now that I think about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. life was really too easy, and I wanted to learn how to do things on my own. I think that um, I've heard someone say, and I'd like to give them credit, but I can't. I don't know who it is, but it wasn't me, that the worst thing you can do for your child is make life easy for them. Make yeah. it so comfortable that they don't grow up. And for those of you that are young that are thinking, shush up, uh, no, I'm serious. <laughs> it is a good gift for somebody to tell you, um, you know, you need to learn some basic skills on your own. I think it's She's ever so something. important. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, watching, I'm watching her expressions yeah. while you're saying <laughs> this. Yeah, okay. Multi-generations <laughs> happening right here at this table, but it's just, we, we um, last night, Snapchat was the hot topic at my house because my son just turned 16, and so that led to all the other topics. And, um, yes. So 
so it's just interesting that you're saying that because um, it's easy sometimes to make life easy on our kids from yeah, false that's sense right. of responsibility or guilt or lack of yep. when you were growing up or whatever, and you know. I, I just want to say one thing about Snapchat. I am not a fan of it. Yeah. Um, I do not support it. Um, we have not allowed it. We, we did not have it either. Someone actually hacked Ashley's account, I remember you created a, a false Snapchat. In fact, we called your husband because he's a techie to say, can you help us figure and you know how, how to trace that? I called the company. And both times, that, that they've tried to create something. It has been a fiasco. I don't believe that anything, the Bible says in Matthew 10, 26, everything hidden will be revealed and covered will be known. It also repeats it, yeah. I believe, in the book of John, similar scripture, similar verbiage. Yeah. And I believe that any time you allow your youth or even an adult to have a conversation that could be omitted and deleted is a dangerous place. Right. And I, I remember some kid getting threats and they were trying to wither it down. Who would have made the threat? And because somebody had created an account, yeah. we're in that mix of, oh, could it have been her? Oh my gosh, that's the furthest thing from us. So I think it's a dangerous <laughs> tool. What gets me is when youth wow. pastors walk up to her and say, you need to get it. Why don't yeah. you have it? And I'm thinking, and like, what are you oh, thinking? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so anyhow, I'm sorry. I no, it's make, good. Those no, are important no, jumping no, topics, it's a, it's a but word. I just feel like it's important because, you know, again, we're talking just about, we started this um, talk about legacy, really, was the first word I heard, and all of this is so important when we are thinking about what we're contending for and what we're passing off, you know? That's right. So, I mean, it's amazing. And another thing, too, she was saying that uh, she went to church, but church wasn't necessarily the answer because she hadn't met Jesus. And, and being religious is just definitely not the way. And, and so many times people watch our show and different shows yeah. and, and think that you're getting what you need by watching us. And that's not it. You've got to have that relationship with Christ. And that's, that's the change that happened in your life that's right. when you finally said, well, Ashley, I, I, I think ever since, as long as you can remember, yeah. because one of the things you all said is maybe we talk about, you know, your life before Jesus. And I, I Ashley said, and I laughed yeah, and she yeah. said. I was like, well, I've always known God, so there's, I don't know anything else. You know, you know so I've always lived my life. And that's a good thing. So yeah. it addresses the legacy that you're yeah. talking about. This yeah. is now my legacy. Yeah. Right. This is the transformation where I choose to say, no longer will it go the way it went for me, which yeah. is now the, here's the difference. Whereas we sometimes prayed. Before dinner, what do we do? We pray before every meal. You know, we pray, God, when we leave the store, thinking, God, you know, that we have legs to walk into a store, you know, that I'm able to have gas in the car when we're driving right. somewhere for everything because yeah. um, he's the one who provides it all. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. what I truly love about, um, you know, your family personally um, is a family that we, you know, look to to emulate and, and to glee off of as examples of um, Christians in the body. And one thing I love about you guys is even talking about, you know, Ashley's always known God, but we know that, you know, you can't live off your parents' faith. You know, I have, a, I have a little sister that woke up one day and was like, oh my gosh, I really don't know Jesus. I thought I did, but that was my sister and my mom and dad. So I'm saying that to say that when I look at you guys, what I love so much is it is an authentic relationship with yeah. Jesus, you yeah. know, and um and it's important and it's powerful. And I think about all the platforms that you guys have to minister and influence. And, and um, it, what's amazing is behind the closed doors in the heart of your own environment, yeah. it's that same yeah. love, that same burn for knowing Jesus and allowing him to, to know you, yeah, you know. For sure. And that's what I think I want her to, to see differently is that um, she's my prayer partner. Now, I only have one. I, I'm sure the circumstance would be different if I had three, four, five, yeah. which we wanted to have three, four, and five, but the Lord said yeah, one is your assignment for now. Home. Who yeah. knows what the future holds, you know? But, but with that being said, she's my prayer partner, and I don't, um, it's not an option. On a sick day, on a healthy day, we go together, we pray, yeah. we read the word, we do devotions together, and we worship. Yeah. And sometimes she'll tell you, I'm that mean mom. We'll be worshiping. And, and sometimes she, she goes back and gets on the sofa. She'll lay back or if we're doing it in the bed. Mm -hmm. And what do I tell you, young lady? Like, you have to get on our knees and honor God. I said, we are, yeah, we're not here to, because I feel like don't be lazy yeah. with it. Wait yeah. a minute, I'm tired. So, oh, God, I love you. Let me just hang out. But, I, but Lord, I am seeking you. I'm like, uh-uh, that I'm just too relaxed. But, but that see, may be legalistic for some I people. I love it, though, because I think a lot, uh, you know, you, 
we have viewers that will watch, and so, some of them will have never heard of you guys, but I would venture to think that uh, quite a few people will see you guys and be like, oh, I, I know them, maybe or may not. So I love this picture with us because it shows people like, you're, you're human too, that you have Absolutely. emotions that you have to, you have to surrender your will to and fight through. And um, I know, I think probably in our next segment, we'll go into Ashley and some of Ashley's life. And that as a matter of fact, it's cost you to live your life, um, surrender to the Lord. But I just think it's it's fun to be able to say, no, no, we all have those moments, and my mom still does this too. <laughs> you know? One of the things that I wanted to do since we talked kind of just about Doug and somebody cares and um, you you know your life, I would love to know, you know, just like you said, that Ashley, you really have grown up always knowing God. Absolutely. But, you know, Doug hasn't always been in your life as a father either. So why don't you give us a, just a short little um, picture of kind of what that's looked like the last few years. How long have you and Doug been married? Ten years. Okay, ten years. So yeah. And known of, each other for a few before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So. For sure. So uh, mom was obviously um, a single-parent mom. Um, and by the age, I think, of uh, four, um, I met, um, now my dad's, I don't want to say Doug's, he's like, that's my dad. <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, so we met him through um, a Bible study and just the Lord put us together. That's a whole other story. Um, but just to make it quick is he just became my father and he had written so many books on the fatherless generation and, you know, God told him it's time to just be a father. And so praise God that I have him in my life and he's my hero. He's my best friend. Um, there was just one time where I remember that we got really close. As I think we're back in 2015 when he was facing stage four lymphoma cancer. It was very difficult. Um, I say it with a smile on my face because praise God he is fully healed now. Yeah. Amen. And we are so grateful to Ooh. Jesus because he's the only one that was able to fully That's heal right. him. He's, yes. He was that miracle worker. Um, but for me, um, I think I was 12 years old at the time. Uh, very difficult because, you know, here I, I didn't have a daddy and now I do. And I did not want him to be Lose taken from me, you know. Mm -hmm. That would have been hard. Yeah. So seeing him go through that was very challenging. Um, but praise God that we seek the Lord every day and took communion every day and just, you know, we seeked God during that time. Um, but I think really during that time is when I started to seek the Lord more. Um, for yourself. For, for myself yeah. and really dive deeper into a relationship with him. And I would say for me, I like I said, I've never not known God. But right. I think that was um, a moment in time where I was like, man, Lord, you are so real to me. I know you. Yeah. Like you said, your sister, I, I know him. I feel like I, yeah. that was a time when I, I, I knew that I knew him. Yeah. And I knew that he was real to me. I mean, like, I accepted him probably when I was like four or five, yeah. <laughs> you know, but. Um, I'm going to interrupt you. It's funny to hear it from the mother's perspective because she, that was probably what I would describe as a transformational Mission time yeah. for you because she not only knew God, she had visitations from the Lord at yeah. the age of three. Very vivid descriptions of being taken to heaven. Wow. and experiencing things that she would not be able to tell me that there's no way she learned in, yeah. in Sunday she school. Just yeah. It just could not have happened. And then we used to wake up at, at if you remember, 4 or 5 yeah, in the morning. I remember. I would wake her up. She would, you know, I'd wake her up and say, it's our, it's our worship time. And we would worship for right. hours in the morning. Right. And, and that's why school, God yeah. would show up. Because we took the time to I, see I them. I think, too, it's just a reminder that we need to give parents permission to take back authority Absolutely. in their households, that they can cultivate that, that we are called. Yep. That should be normal well, for us. Ashley knows that when she prays for somebody, don't pray a prayer of courtesy. You yeah. better pray and believe that if they got yes. a migraine, that migraine must yeah. leave. Yeah. That if there is cancer yes. that's battling, that cancer has been defeated. Yes. We need to pray with the faith that moves mountains. Yeah. Absolutely. Not and, just lip and service. And I think, too, again, you just touched on Doug and the cancer, but all people watching wouldn't know that, you know, that Doug had stage four cancer. And even the encouragement that you're giving of even that doesn't mean that we're not going to walk through opportunities and moments sure. to truly well, and I'm going to get God back glory to being real when we talked earlier about the fact that we pray together um, Ashley and I have had uh, moments where I'm mad at her I've disciplined her she's done something not cool um, believe it or not, Sorry. she's real. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and um, and it happened before I got on her, before we're going to pray, and I've got attitude. <laughs> and we're going in to have our, because we have to pray, because it's not an you option. Yeah. And I have to go to her and I say, You're, you, have, you have 
really irritated me. I'm <laughs> mad, but I we okay. both we need to okay. I'm bring Sorry. it down, cool <laughs> it up. But um, but we need we need to apologize to each other, yeah. and we need yeah. to get right because we cannot yeah. enter into His presence yeah. with with, a with bad attitude. And so I'm just well, being honest about with that the fact with that. the intro of this, and um, I know we just have a couple more minutes in this segment, but even in, in talking about marriage and stuff, and I love that you're not afraid to vocalize that we have to lean in to communicating, to not giving the enemy the, the foothold, right. you know? Um, Close doors. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure really. there's no open doors. Yeah, I love it. Well, That's the key, though. I hope that you have been listening today and said, <laughs> "Wow, I gotta, he- I've gotta hear more. I've gotta hear more <laughs> of what's going on Woo. here." And so we, we're just pray that you're gonna watch the next couple of segments we're gonna have, yeah. and uh, find out more about these fine, wonderful Christian, sold out warriors for Christ. Yeah. I tell you, I just, I love people that uh, aren't ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus that really stand up. And so we're going to pray. Would you pray over our, our, sure. our audience today? I would. So, Lord, we just say thank you right now, thank even at the sound Father, of my voice, for every Jesus. person watching, every person listening, Father God. Lord, I just say thank you, God, today for freedom, yeah. Lord. Yes. For Jesus. freedom, Father, that one thing, Lord, that Ashley or Lisa said, even maybe about their experience or Doug's, God, would bring freedom and, and power and hope, Father. Lord, I thank yes. you, God, that people know the truth by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimonies, Father. So wherever these um, viewers are throughout the world, God, we just say thank you, Lord, for freedom. I just feel like there's a freedom that's coming right now in Jesus' name. There's a supernatural touch right now in Jesus' name that you are enough, that you are enough for the Lord, and that today you can begin a new legacy in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, we thank you for watching today. If you want to get more information about uh, Doug's ministry and what they're up to, you can write us at ITW.TV. You can see all our information at the end on the screen. God bless you. Yes. We'll have it posted.